are so glad to have you guys join us today for another one of our Aggie Horticulture Facebook Live sessions. Um, we are going to have a lot of fun today, so I hope you're ready to be creative um, and enjoy a little fun creative outlet uh, while we're um, working at home. So um, anyway, let us know where you're listening from. If you can uh, post in the comments and, and let us know. We're going to give a couple of minutes for folks to get online. Uh, my name is Lisa Whittlesey. I'm an Extension Program Specialist with uh, Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service. Um, my main job is I'm director for the Junior Master Gardener Program, but one of the things I love as a hobby is doing floral design. So I'm going to get to share a little bit of that with you today. Um, I hope that it will inspire you to be creative and enjoy um, a little stress relief that flowers can provide um, as we are sheltering in place and having to kind of work differently because of COVID-19. So I hope that it will inspire you uh, to go outside and look in your own garden, things that you might could cut and use um, for Easter and for your table to kind of spruce up. Uh, we do have a group of our horticulturists that are online today. So uh, if you have particular questions about plants or about flowers that you can use, I encourage you to type them in the comment boxes. We'll try to answer those. Um, and if there's some particular questions you guys have about floral techniques, I'll try to go over those and we will be uh, recording this. So be sure that uh, you can check it back later and you can watch as we go along. So Katie, do we have some folks joining us? We've got a lot of great folks from Austin, from Fort Bend County, Master Gardeners, from here in College Station, Lubbock. We're getting a few hard to hear, so um, we're going to come a little closer and see if we can get that. Okay. Hopefully you guys can hear okay now. Um, let us know. Give us a little thumbs up um, if you can. Got oh. Jane Gray from Richmond coming on. From Seabrook, Texas. That's exciting. From Lubbock. Awesome. Okay. Well, I wanted to start, and we'll have some that will kind of be continuing to go on, to just talk about some things that you could use for floral design. And I'm going to start by saying every single thing you see in these buckets are things that I had in my yard or that friends had in their yard that shared with me. Okay. That, that's it. I went and bought nothing. Okay. And I, I'm going to use a lot of trees and shrubs that you probably have in your home landscape. And we'll talk about maybe how you could utilize those because there's probably stuff in your own yard and you're like, gosh, I don't have anything blooming that you could use that would look really, really beautiful. For me, when I am growing, it has to do double duty, okay? It has to be something that works in my landscape that can be really beautiful, but that also can be something that I cut and that I use in design arrangements because I really love to be able to um, cut and use them in floral arrangements. One of the things is I'll encourage you to be sure you have a pair of pruning shears. Um, that's the best thing to use when you go to cut, whether flowers or greenery in the garden. Another tip is if you're going to cut early in the morning is best. Sometimes we don't have options when we cut, but if you cut early in the morning, what happens is you, the flower or the, the leaves, as soon as you cut it off the plant, they start losing water. And so you're going to, it's not as hot early in the morning and you can immediately get them in buckets of water and they're going to just last better for you. The other thing is I really love to use floral preservative, if you have it. Now this is literally from my house, and when I pick up flowers at the grocery store, um, they usually give you several of these packets, and so I just keep all of them that I have. So if I have floral preservative, it's really good to add it to your water in your buckets. It will help your flowers to last a little longer, but don't worry, if you don't have that, there's some things you can do. One is, try to not let just the, the leaves get into the water because the leaves are going to break down it's going to cause your water to start smelling bad you're going to get bacteria growth in your water so remove the lower leaves is a good thing the other thing is to use warm water 
not hot water, but warmer water. And what that does is the flowers and the greenery will take it up a little bit quicker and it helps them to last longer. Um, the other thing I may do is if you have a spray bottle, you can spray and mist them to kind of keep the humidity up as you uh, store them and start to use them in your flowering arrangements. One thing I want to mention is there's a lot of misnomers that are incorrect. One is flowers don't get headaches. Okay, there's a lot of stuff out there. Add an aspirin to your vase or whatever. No, you don't need to do that. All you need is a clean bucket, floral preservative if you have it. Um, we even sometimes have put, you know, if you have a couple of gallons of water, put a cap full of Clorox in it to help cut down on the bacteria growth. So that's the main thing is clean buckets, warm water, and then if you have floral preservative, it's good to use them. I wanted you to see a variety of the things that I cut today, um, and I'll be talking about them as we go through it. There are some flowers, for instance, that the shape kind of depicts where you're gonna put it in the arrangement. So some that are really tall, we're gonna use in tall places in the arrangement. There are some things that I'm gonna show you that the texture is really interesting. Notice here are these poppy seed heads. I love those because of the texture. The bloom doesn't hold up very well in cut arrangements, but the texture is great. Uh, we had some onions that had started bolting, and so I cut these because I thought, isn't that cool? I love the texture of the stem, and the, the seed head is kind of interesting. Um, a lot of different greenery that I use, and I have a list, and I'll kind of be talking through it. Here's one of my favorites. This is a shrub that I have, Iliagnus. It's really great for cut uh, and used in arrangements. Um, I have some oak leaves that I use. Um, I also love to use herbs. So if you've got mint at home or you've got rosemary, those are really great to be able to use in arrangements. I have oak leaves. Um, this is some Dusty Miller that I had in my front flower bed. I love it not only because of the lacy texture, but the color of the foliage is kind of a nice, interesting thing to have as well. Um, in this bucket, you'll see some of you may have holly fern at home. This is one from my uh, shady area in my yard. Um, it's great. Um, asparagus fern, I have that as a hanging basket that works really well. Um, I had some snapdragons. I also had a container of English ivy, and I cut a little bit off of that this morning. Um, I had some of my um, Henry Dulberg salvia um, that was blooming, and some of my yarrow um, snapdragons. So kind of a lot of different things that I'll show you. I'll talk a little bit about how you use them and some techniques and maybe some differences in textures to make your designs interesting. So let's get started. Um, I wanted to have the camera go around this way and show you a couple of different things that you could do with containers, okay? And I brought my little notes here in case I forget. Um, one thing I will tell you, some of y'all may be like, I need to write all this stuff down. I have a little handout sheet that I had sent to um, our web designer, and they're going to be posting that. It's just a little PDF document of some of the tips um, that might be helpful to you, so check that out. Um, also, we have resources on growing flowers uh, on Aggie Horticulture on our website, aggiehorticulture.tamu.edu. And as a graduate of our department here at A&M, uh, some of you may not know we have one of the most renowned floral design departments in the United States, the Ben School of Floral Design. Uh, we have a wonderful undergraduate program for students wanting to take floral design classes. We also have floral design classes that we offer for the public and for um, florists. So we encourage you to check that out. There's resources and links to that available on that handout. So I want to start with containers, okay? Um, you may be like me and you're going, I have no idea what I'm going to use for a container. If it can hold water, it can be a container, okay? I've done containers in bell peppers. I've, done, I've used a French loaf of bread as a container, and I have tons of glass containers. And I wanted to start with that because we're here at home. We don't want you to go and buy anything. We want you to shelter in place, but we want you to be creative with the things you might have in your home. So I wanted to show you a couple of examples. One is, 
Um, a lot of people get really frustrated because they start putting things in and they don't stay where they want them to stay. So this is something you can do on any container. I, I had some floral adhesive tape, but let me tell you, I don't always have this at home. I have it because I have my little caddy with stuff in it. You can use duct tape, okay? Get duct tape, cut it to the width that you want, and make a grid. And what this does is when you start putting your stems in place, it holds them so they don't shift. Another tip is starting with your greenery first. That allows you to, when you start adding your flowers, that they stay where you want them to stay. So having some kind of grid will help you. Um, there are some other ones. This is one that I had bought, I don't know, probably five or six years ago, that you can just set on top of a vase. But see how it has kind of that grid with little openings. If you have chicken wire at home, that would work the same way. Um, this is one, and I kind of started filling it out. Y'all are going to love that. I always have mason jars at my house, and that was just a cool little thing I ordered online. I can't remember if it was on Etsy or Amazon. And they screw on top of a standard um, mason jar. So it's kind of a neat way to just have something where you can use those mason jars that you might have left over. And I started greening this one up because I'm actually doing a design in that one. Some of you may be like, well, it's Easter. What could I do? All right, this is an example if you have little containers that you can put inside larger containers. And the reason that's neat is you can put water on the inside and then you can use this outside to pour. Um, I had some jelly beans, which was kind of fun. Um, this is one that I did and I actually sliced limes. Okay, so the same thing y'all can see there and I'll add a few more of those lime slices. Um, it just adds a little interest, okay? And you could do this for other times of the year. Um, with cranberries in the fall, you might could do this with acorns, um, but just sort of a way to get double duty. Um, these are larkspur, okay? And I just cut them and just tuck them in there, okay? It doesn't take a whole lot. And y'all may not know what this is. This was actually off my patio. These are geranium leaves out of my potted geranium. Um, look how nice that is, okay? So I can just add that around the top of the container and it just finishes that off. So really simple, one or two blooms, okay? A container inside of a container and then using lemons or limes or um, jelly beans if you have it. Um, I had some ribbon. You don't have to add ribbon, but if you wanted to, you could to add a little ribbon treatment. So something really, really, really simple that makes a nice, easy floral design, okay? Hey Lisa, we had a question about the, the tape grid. Would you mind giving them another close-up look at that sure. and how you would do that? Sure. Here's the, the tape grid. Um, and I just cut the tape in strips, okay? This was an old um, piece of china that I had. Again, if it's in my house, I, it gets double duty, okay? Um, so you could add another layer if you wanted to, but it just helps to hold those stems in place as you start working with them. And again, a, a good tip is I like to start on this type of arrangement with the greenery first because then it really helps it so when you start adding your flowers that the flowers stay where you want them to stay, okay? So what if you don't have something to make a grid, okay? So I wanted to think about other ways that you could use glass containers. This is a glass container I had at home and anything vining, okay? It could be honeysuckle if you have an old grapevine. Um, anything that's vining, take the leaves off of it okay and literally wad it up okay just wad it up like this and tuck it down in there and what that does is it creates all these little crevices you fill it with water and then when you start adding your stems it helps to hold those stems in place okay um, in floral design we call that a type of armature that's one that's actually in the container so it's kind of a neat way to use for large containers um, to be able to hold stems in place. Another thing I want to show you is, I bet everybody has twigs in their yard, okay? 
So this is an armature I made. Literally, I walked around and, and got twigs. And, and I'm going to show you my favorite little invention ever. Can you see it up close? That's right. It's held together with zip ties. Zip ties are the best. I always have zip ties, or if I don't, I raid my husband's um, tool shed. Um, he always has zip ties. So you can use those to bind it together, and then you can actually lay it on top of a glass container. So I'm going to show you one that, um, this is a, a shallow glass container that I had, okay? So you could just lay that on top and then you do your flowers in this way. This is one that I did, do y'all see that? And again, I just went outside and cut. That is some, I have no idea. Greg Grant can probably tell us exactly what vine it is. It's, it's got these little thorns on it. I call it sticker vine, okay? I don't like it, but I had it all over some of my trees. And so I cut it and I took the leaves off of it and then I'm using that as an armature that I set on top of here. And I thought for Easter it kind of looks nice. It's got little thorns on here. To me it's sort of reminiscent of the crown of thorns. I had some Lady Banksia. And I started with that because it's kind of long and vining. So I put it in and carried it around. And then I'm going to just do some small groupings of little flowers. So I've got some Dianthus here. This is a Honeysuckle Americana. Um, these are our Belinda's Dream Roses, and they kind of got hit pretty hard by thrips, so I didn't have many of those to put in, and some of the Dianthus. But I'm going to add a couple of other things in there, just for you to see how you might could use this style of design. Um, you want to be sure you get it in the water. I missed the water on that one. Um, now, Lisa, as you're designing um, a question about your fruit design, how long will those lime slices last? Um, that's a good question. Usually, you know, five or six days usually, and, and, and because they're not coming in contact with water, right? Because they're, you know, you've got the vase inside the vase. So they work pretty well. Um, it's, it's a way that I kind of like to do something creative. You could do it with lemons or oranges as well. Um, again, here's some of these little dianthus. Um, this is just almost, think of this as like a little living wreath. So you can tuck things in all the way around. Um, I enjoy having a little bit of variety. Um, so some things with different textures. So this is a ray tape uh, type of flower where we have some that are more form flowers. Um, this is grandma's yellow rose. Um, and those of us in Texas know we like our yellow roses. So I'm gonna tuck that one in. Um, but so wanna talk a little bit about how you cut your stem. As you're choosing. Okay, good, good question. One of the things I like to do is I like to cut my stems at an angle. Okay, and I'll try to show that up close so you can see that. Let's get on this rose. Okay, so if I'm going to use this, y'all see here, I cut that at an angle. And the reason is it gives you a lot more surface area for that individual flower to drink. Um, and then as you put it in, it just has more area for that flower to drink and do well. But that gives you an idea of what you could do. I think it's interesting because the center is open. Um, I've even done this before where I might have a candle that was in a candle holder in the middle coming up out of it, which is really beautiful. So literally, I've done this with a truffle bowl at home. I've done it with my salad bowl. So it's kind of a, an interesting way to use what you have. You know, you don't have to have a certain amount of each individual balloon, okay? So ways that you can do um, an armature. I want to show this just because some of you probably have this at home. Um, this is an old container I had. It has a frog in the bottom. Not literally a frog, but it's called a floral frog. And for thick stems like this iris, it works really well. And so it has little prongs and you just press it in and it holds it in place. So imagine if you had a container with a frog, you know, might only need one or two stems to go in there and a little greenery at the base to be able to fill that in. Okay, repurpose everything. This is a sugar mold that I had and I normally have um, candles in it. And I thought, well, 
I'm going to do this with just little bits of greenery. So this was from um, Bald Cypress Tree. Um, this is mint, okay, that I had. This is yarrow from my garden, and I just tucked that in. And so imagine how pretty that would be just with a little bit of greenery. The differences in textures, a fine texture next to a coarse texture really looks good, not only in floral design, but also in your landscape. So that combination is nice. If you want to Easter it up a little bit, um, I had some of these little eggs at home. So maybe you just tuck a couple of those in there, okay? Um, that would be really sweet to have in your window frame or to have in your center of your table. So it doesn't have to be really elaborate, okay? Um, some of you may have um, china at home, okay? So this is a little china cup and saucer, okay? Day lilies last for a day, okay? But they're beautiful and I wanted to use them. So, hey, I just need it for the day, so I'm gonna use it. So again, I put a couple in here. Um, that's my geranium leaves and I put a little rosemary for contrast and texture. But imagine on your table if you had five or six of these going down the center of the table and you just use what you have to be able to put it together. Super easy in a way to repurpose things um, that you've got. Okay, I want to look at this one just a bit uh, because I want to kind of start filling it in. Um, this is the one that had the little grid on it and I'm going to start adding some foliage, I mean some flowers. One of the things I get questions on a lot is how tall do I make the arrangement? A good rule of thumb is look at your container as the clue. Typically, we want two and a half times the height of the container to be the, the maximum height of your arrangement, okay? And the same thing in width. So in general, low, long containers, you're gonna do low, long arrangements. Tall, thin containers, you're gonna do tall, thin arrangements. So for this one, I'm gonna start with something that maybe gives me a little bit of line. And I'm gonna look over here at what I have. Um, again, to pull off these lower things, the lower branches, we can use these lower in the design, but that's going to give us our height, okay? And we're going to stick that right in there, okay? And then I'm going to add a couple of others. We want every flower to kind of have their own space, so I'm going to start with just my larkspur first. See how that's kind of forming that overall shape? And then I might think about what other textures do I have that I would want to add to this particular design, okay? So I've got some of that purple going. I think I need something with a little bit more mass in there. So how about more of a ray top flower, okay? Um, some of those things that you might have in your garden, Rudbeckia, um, Coreopsis, there's all sorts of things that, that kind of give that. But that contrast in those textures is really interesting. Um, you may just have one of them. I happen to have two, so I'm going to add both of them to this particular arrangement. Okay, so I'm going to put one kind of over here. But there's not really a magic on how it has to go in there. We kind of want each flower to have its own little space. The other thing is you want more of the weight of the design down low. So um, there may be a few things that I put in here down low in the design. Maybe some of this dianthus um, to give a little bit of weight down low. This is what we would call our focal area. So we want our area down low in the design to kind of draw attention, okay, down low. And so that's gonna do that for us. Um, so really, whatever you have, but what I wanted you to see is, boy, that little grid helps me out to make sure that that stays where I want it to stay and doesn't shift around, okay? So I could continue filling in with more of them, but I wanted to, to give you a feel sort of for what that could look like. Okay, I have one design I want to show you. A lot of people are probably dealing with an Easter, Easter basket at home, okay? I had some Oasis at my house just because I do floral stuff a lot. 
Um, if you have it, the wet oasis, you just soak it in water and then you can use that directly in here. Um, I had floral moss at home. You don't have to use this. If you use it, I like to wet it and you can use a greening pin or if you don't have a greening pin, a hair pin to kind of attach it to that oasis like I've done. A lot of people worry about how tall to make an arrangement like this, okay? Or worry about the handle. I just incorporate the can handle into part of the design itself. So I'm going to show you, um, I'm going to start with some of these gorgeous delphinium. We have this um, growing and it's magnificent. I'm going to put some of that in here. Um, and, and it's kind of fun to have them at different stages of growth. This type of design I like to call a vegetative design um, because we want it to grow like how it grows in the garden, okay? So we're gonna have a little clump of delphinium growing here, just like we might see in our garden outside, okay? So I'll turn that around. Um, oops, where you could see that, okay? Tall in the arrangement. And I'm not worrying about spreading it out throughout the design. I want it to look like a little piece of my garden I just took out, okay? So, and Lisa, when you're using foam, how do you soak it correctly? Do you just dunk it? How long? What do um, you do? Fill your, fill your sink with water and just set the oasis on the top. And when it sinks to the bottom, it's fully saturated. Because if you cut it, you don't want to have any air pockets. If you have air pockets in it and the flower tries to go into there, it's not going to be able to drink. So that's a good... That's a good tip. Okay, I brought some kind of cool things. I told y'all we had this. I thought these were sort of fun. I love the texture. Um, these obviously are really tall. Um, so I'm gonna put some of these in this design just because I love the texture of it, okay? Y'all may be going, Lisa has really lost her mind, but um, I think it just adds a little element of fun. I don't want them right exactly at the same level. I'll probably put two of them in there. Um, but I thought it adds a little bit of interest to that particular design. I have some iris. Um, some of you may have iris in your gardens at home. I thought that one might be kind of fun to put in. I'm gonna tuck that in here, I think. Um, really springy looking. Turn that around where you can see it, okay, coming in. Um, I went into my yard and I had an elm tree, and I thought, oh, I need a branch. And I remembered that I had a little bitty bird nest um, that I had. You could make one if you have, like, ball moss or something like that. I actually had this in my little floral deal. Um, so I'm going to put this in here because I really want it to look eastery. I'm going to add my branch. And I'm gonna put my little, I'm gonna put my little nest in there. And probably afterwards I'll go in and wire it so that it stays. But I wanted y'all to just see you can use all sorts of little fun things like that in your design. Um, another thing I found at my house is I had, you know, horticulture people, we always have a crack so this is a cracked pot that I had and I thought that would be kind of fun to put in my design so I'm just going to tuck that in right there okay so imagine we can have something spilling out of that a little bit which would be kind of fun to do um, and then now think about where you could pull in different colors okay we want it to be interesting from all sides so imagine it's a garden on all sides. So I'm going to add some things coming here in the back that would be fun. Any questions, Katie, that are coming in? A little bit about um, greenery. Like if you don't happen to have flowers, um, you know, how, how do you approach it with just using shrubs and herbs? Excellent. Okay, so I'm gonna, let's start with that then. Um, here's my Eliagnus. If you don't have this, you could use Gaviopon. You could use oak leaves. You could use any kind of greenery. It's going to add a nice texture. So I'm just going to cut that. And when you're using the foam, you want to stick it, cut it at an angle and just stick that in. And notice how I have it kind of spilling out over the edge of the pot. Um, I like to do that because it incorporates that into the design. So 
There's an example of adding a little bit of that. That's kind of a coarse texture, so I might add a finer texture green or anything next to it. Um, let's see what I've got. I've got some rosemary, which see how that's really fine texture, but it's a nice contrast with that. So I'll go in here and I'll add some of the rosemary in tight. And really it's just whatever you have, okay? Um, the thing about these vegetative designs that I really like is you, you know, you may only have one of this or a little bit of that, um, and you can kind of add whatever you've got, okay? So that's kind of some nice texture that I have in there. Um, I had a few daffodils that were in a pot um, that were still blooming, so I'm gonna put a few of those on this side um, just for some interest. I will tell you that you know, you just don't be afraid to kind of go and experiment. There are some things that are going to hold up a little longer in your designs than others. Um, and if they, you know, if they start looking bad, you can just pull them out and replace it with something else. But, um, you know, you kind of want to use it how they grow in nature. I think something kind of needs to be spilling out of that pot a little bit. Um, I have this yarrow in my house. And this is Martha Gonzalez rose. I have in my front flower bed. Um, red's one of my favorite colors, so I'm going to add a little bit of that just kind of coming out here. I thought it would be kind of fun. Um, some of the, the antique roses or old roses are kind of fun to add um, in designs. I love this yarrow. It's a fine texture, and I'm going to put some of that in here as a nice little contrast, but you can see how we're just building it um, as we go and taking care to kind of cover the edges of the container a little bit. Do you see that? It's always fun to add a little element of fun to your designs. So I brought this because I had mushrooms at home in my refrigerator, okay? And I had toothpicks. So if you have asparagus or if you have mushrooms, these are kind of fun to do. So watch this. You can tuck those in here. I'm trying to think where I want them. I'm going to put those right in here. And you just use this with your toothpick, okay? And put a little tuck of those. So that makes it kind of fun. And literally, I didn't buy anything. I mean, it's just stuff I had in my refrigerator. I've done it with asparagus as well, to have a few asparagus stalks. But Remember, a floral should be a reflection of you. So adding some interest, we want it to look like you just literally went and cut some things um, out of your garden. Now, Lisa, as we're ending, as we're getting towards the end here, what should we challenge people maybe to try this at home? Yes, we would love to see your designs, okay? Um, you know, it's, it's Easter and a lot of people are not able to do Easter like they normally do, but it's fun for us to, I think, be able to share our creativity with others and share our table with others, if not virtually. Um, so we encourage you to share what you create. And so we have a hashtag for you. It's hashtag Aggie Port Floral Design. So if you use one of these techniques, whether it's in Oasis or if you're doing a design in a mason jar or in a teacup, we would love to see your a little portion of your backyard. So we encourage you to post those and share those. Um, I think the beauty of other people getting to see the creativity of others is a fun way for us to enjoy um, this time when we have to be apart, but we can be together through creativity and a really fun outlet like floral design. So I hope this has inspired you a little bit to think about things that you can do. I'm gonna probably continue adding to my design, but I just want you to see that, you know, even with just greenery, there's things that can add interest to your design. And don't forget about texture, like these little poppy pods and things like that, the little mushrooms. Those are a fun way to add an element of texture to your design, okay? so. I think a lot of people worry about, oh, it has to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be yours. And part of floral design is really putting you 
into the design itself. So I hope you have fun with it. I know we're getting close to the end of our time. Um, if you have any other questions, we will be answering questions after the event, so please post those. A reminder that I do have that PDF um, with some basic floral design tips. I put some of my favorite flowers that I like to grow for cut flowers. My most favorite one of all is not blooming yet, which is zinnias. And if you haven't grown zinnias in your garden, it's so easy to grow and they're fun for kids to grow. And the other thing is that's something that you can just cut and cut and cut and it comes in every color in the world. Katie, I forgot to show you one last thing, and I want you to kind of zoom in on this on the larkspur. Since it's Easter, do y'all see the center of that little larkspur? Do y'all see the bunny? Do you see the bunny? It's fun to find little hidden tre treasures like that in your garden. So while you're at home, I hope that this maybe will make you think about looking at flowers different, looking at foliage different, and walking outside and finding the beauty that you have right in your own backyard. It's been fun. Thank you for joining us, and hope you have a great week. Stay safe out there.